Wisdom, the final frontier to true knowledge. Welcome to Wisdom Trek, where our mission is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Hello, my friend. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your captain on our journey to increase wisdom and create a living legacy. Thank you for joining us today as we explore wisdom on our second millennium of podcast. This is day 1468 of our trek, and our focus on Friday is future technologies and societal advances. So we call it Futuristic Fridays. My personality is one that I've always been very future-oriented. Since my childhood, I have yearned for the exploration and discovery of new technologies and advancements for the future. I did grow up on the original Star Trek series, and even today, as now I am on my 65th revolution around the sun, I still dream of traveling into space. Each week we will explore rapidly converging technologies and advancements, which will radically change our lives. At times, these topics make sound like something out of a science fiction novel. But each area that we will explore is already on its way to becoming reality over the next couple of decades. To keep with our theme of Ask Gramps, I will put the weekly topics in the form of a question to get us on track. So this week's question is, Hey Gramps, I have been dreaming about flying cars since the Jetsons cartoon was released in 1962. It was supposedly set in the year 2062. Do you think we will have flying cars by then? And how will that change car ownership? So today we're going to look at flying cars and aerial ride sharing. Last week we focused on how virtual reality will change everyday life and work. This week we'll jump into transportation and explore flying cars. I'm using some of the information mentioned in Peter Diamandis' blog and his book, The Future is Faster Than You Think. In 2019, for the seventh straight year, Los Angeles earned the dubious honor of being the most gridlocked metropolitan area in the world where the average driver spends over two and a half working weeks per year trapped in traffic. Countless cities are close behind. For the average driver, dreaming of being elevated over jammed freeways and flying uninterrupted to one's destination seems well out of reach. Yet these visions will soon become realities. The time where we use internal combustion engines in cars will gradually end. From here on out, the focus will be on electric vehicles, autonomous ride-sharing, and flying fleets. The implications for society and the automotive industry are huge. Now, it might seem a bit strange to say this, but eventually we'll see the death of car ownership, especially in metropolitan areas. During this decade, we will reach the peak for the manufacturing of internal combustion engines. That may sound somewhat premature, but oil demand for the transportation industry is predicted to peak as early as 2025, according to Bloomberg New Energy Finance, and some experts suggest that it may have already peaked. Currently, electronic vehicles, or EVs, displace the need for 350 barrels of oil each day. Long-term EVs are projected to disrupt the demand for over 58 million barrels of oil each day by the end of this decade, and the figure is steadily on the rise as electric vehicles' costs plummet. Speeding to first place in today's transit race, electric vehicles are set to win by sheer economic advantage, fast becoming the foundation for autonomous ride-sharing fleets of the future. As this happens, it will soon become uneconomical and even socially unacceptable for you to hold on to that old gas-guzzling car, at least in major metropolitan areas. Next, we will see electronic vehicles migrating to the skies in the form of a flying vehicle. By mid-2018, over $1 billion had already been invested in startups by VCs and aerospace giants in at least 25 different flying car companies. A dozen vehicles have already been test-flown, while another dozen are in stages ranging anywhere from PowerPoint to prototype. Let's explore the next era of transportation and how that will change. We see that the basis for the hardware for these new vehicles are already here. In 2019, Uber hosted its third annual flying car conference, Uber Elevate, in Washington, D.C. The event attracted a motley crew of power elites, CEOs, entrepreneurs, architects, designers, technologists, venture capitalists, and government officials, and even some real estate magnates. The conference was attended by over a thousand individuals total, all gathered to witness the birth of a new industry. 
Jeff Holden, Uber's former chief product officer, initiated the conference with quite a vision. This is what he said. We've come to accept extreme congestion as part of our lives, says Holden. In the U.S., we have the honor of being home to 10 of the world's 25 most congested cities, costing us approximately $300 billion in lost income and productivity. Uber is one company that aims to solve the urban mobility fleet by offering aerial ride-sharing solutions, taking advantage of the untapped airspace, just as New York City scaled buildings to the skies to combat increasing congestion on the ground. Aerial ride-sharing may sound like a sci-fi cliché, but Holden has a solid track record of disruptive innovation. In the late 1990s, he followed Jeff Bezos from New York to Seattle to become one of the earliest employees of Amazon, where he spearheaded Amazon Prime. Next, Holden went to another disruptive startup, Groupon, and then on to Uber, where he strung together a series of wins, such as Uber Taxi, Uber Pool, and Uber Eats, and most recently, and radically, Uber's self-driving car program. So when Holden proposed an even zanier product line, the Uber Aerial Ride Sharing, what followed was no surprise. The company leadership, as well as everyone else, took him seriously. There is a good reason for this. The theme of the Uber Elevate Summit isn't about flying cars. Those cars are already here, at least in prototype form. Instead, the focus was on a path to scale. The more critical point, the path is a lot shorter than many suspect. As I had mentioned, by 2018, over 25 different flying car company startups have secured upwards of $1 billion in aggregate funding. Larry Page, co-founder and CEO of Alphabet Google, was among the first to envision the electronic vertical takeoff and landing vehicle and its potential, personally funding two companies, Z-Aero and Kitty Hawk. Then there are the established players like Boeing, Airbus, Embraer, and Bell Helicopter, which they recently changed their company to just Bell, a reference to the future disappearance of the helicopter itself. All these companies are also in the game. Thus, for the first time in history, we've come past the point of talking about the possibility of flying cars, that cars are actually here and are being tested today. We may see in the future where car ownership becomes economically irrational. Uber's goal, according to Holden, is to demonstrate flying car capability by 2021, just next year, and then have aerial ride-sharing fully operational in Dallas and L.A. by 2025. He goes even further, and this is what Holden says, Ultimately, we want to make it economically irrational to own or use a car. How irrational? Well, let's look at the numbers. Today, the marginal cost of car ownership, that is not including the purchase price, but everything else that goes into the car, such as gas, repairs, insurance, parking, and other costs, is $0.49 cents per passenger mile. For comparison, the helicopter, which has more problems than just costs, covers a mile in about $8.93. Now, that's quite a delta at this point in time. For their launch in 2021, though, Uber Air wants to reduce the price per mile to $5.73 and then rapidly drive it down to $1.84. But it is Uber's long-term target that's a game-changer. They aim to drive down the cost of $0.44 per mile, and that is to say that it'll be even cheaper than owning and the cost of driving a car. You'll be able to get a lot more per mile. The specs on Uber's proposed service are quite impressive. Their primary interest is in the electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, or EVATOLs for short. For an EVATOL to qualify for Uber's aerial ride-sharing program, it must be able to carry one pilot and four passengers at a speed of over 150 miles per hour for three continuous hours of operation before needing to be recharged. While they envision 25 miles as their shortest flight, and think of the distance between Malibu, California and downtown Los Angeles, these requirements will allow you to leap from northern San Diego to southern San Francisco in a single bound. Uber now boasts five partners who are committed to delivering Evitals that meet these specifications, with another five or ten still to come. Just envision aerial freeways. But these vehicles alone don't make car ownership irrational, so Uber has also partnered with NASA and the FAA to develop air traffic management systems to coordinate their flying feet. Beyond the government players, Uber has additionally teamed up with architects, designers, and real estate developers to create mega skyports that are needed for passengers to load and unload and for the vehicles to take off and land. To qualify as an Uber-ready mega skyport, these facilities must be able to recharge vehicles, handle 1,000 takeoffs and landings per hour, which is equivalent to 4,000 passengers, and to occupy no more than one acre of land, 
which is small enough to sit atop old parking garages and the roof of many skyscrapers. According to Uber's calculations, a network of 40 skyports strong, positioned strategically around the city, should be able to clear as many as 1 million passengers per hour. What are the implications of this? Put all this together, and by 2030, or shortly thereafter, you'll be able to order an on-demand aerial rideshare as easily as you do Uber Ride, Uber Pool, or Uber Eats. If a century worth of transportation adoption rates are to be trusted, urban aviation could be a central mode for getting from point A to point B by the end of this decade. All of this raises fundamental questions. Why now? After dreaming of this since the Jetsons cartoon in 1962, and then Blade Runner hover cars and back to the future DeLorean for several decades, how will we be able to accomplish this mission just within the next decade? There are already over 100 patents on file in the U.S. for roadable aircraft, and a handful of those have actually flown. We realize that most have not, and none have delivered on the promise of the Jetsons quite yet. And this does cause frustration among many, and our frustration at the lack of delivery has become a meme unto itself. At the turn of this last century, in a now-famous IBM commercial, comedian Avery Johnson asked, It's the year 2000, but where are the flying cars? I was promised flying cars. I don't see any flying cars. Why? 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 And in 2011, Peter Thiel's now infamous manifesto. What happened to the future? The prominent investor echoed the concern in writing, We wanted flying cars. Instead, we got 140 characters. Yet, as should be clear by now, the wait is nearly over. The cars are here, and we are rapidly developing them to the point of being economically feasible and accessible to much of the population. The infrastructure is coming fast also. While many in metropolitan areas are sipping their lattes and checking their Instagram, science fiction is becoming science fact. And as a Christ follower, all the new technology can and should be a means to further God's kingdom here on earth as we fulfill His high calling. Just like commercial air travel changed their ability to reach millions with the gospel of Christ, so will each of these new technology breakthroughs extend our reach. Personal flying vehicles will be just yet another tool. And Psalm chapter 55 verse 6 tells us, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, then I would fly away and rest. And that's a wrap for today's question. Join us again next Futuristic Friday as we look at AI, robots, and drones on our Ask Ramps episode. Our next trek will be Meditation Monday, where we will help you to reflect on what is most important in life. So I encourage your friends and family to join us and to come along with us on Monday for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 1,467 daily treks or read the associated journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. And I encourage you to subscribe to Wisdom Trek on your favorite podcast player so that each day will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor. But most importantly, I am your friend, as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, Lend to others generously. Lead with integrity. And leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward. Enjoy your journey and create a great day every day. See you on Monday.